Russia's military is grappling with a new reality, a relentless Ukrainian counteroffensive that has not only pushed their forces to the brink, but has also shattered their sense of security within their own borders. As the Kremlin scrambles to pull troops from distant corners of its vast federation, a sense of desperation looms. Soldiers from remote regions are being hastily deployed with little coordination, no unified strategy, and facing a fiercely determined Ukrainian defense. The chaos is palpable, with the entire region teetering on the edge of catastrophe. But Ukraine isn't merely defending itself anymore. It's executing a calculated and meticulously planned operation designed to rewrite the rules of this conflict. To understand the scope and significance of Ukraine's strategic shift, it's crucial to delve into the insights of former General Ben Hodges, where he highlights how Ukraine's military maneuvers are no longer about territorial gains or tactical victories alone. We're about six weeks into this now since Ukraine launched its counteroffensive in the Kursk uh, direction. Um, it, it has taken quite some time for Russia to mount a credible, strong response to it. I've seen numbers that range between 30 and 40,000 Russian troops that would be involved in this. Perhaps that's accurate. I don't know. They've been get, attempting over the last few weeks to gather people from different parts of the, uh, of the Russian Federation to do it. Um, so we should not think of this as a like a NATO core that's counterattacking. These are troops that are being gathered together from different places. So I don't know how coherent their response is, but nonetheless, it's it's going to be something that the Ukrainians will have will have uh, anticipated, and I suspect that they have prepared defenses. They have got capabilities to deal with it, but at some point it, they may get overwhelmed. I I just don't know the numbers that are out there and the and the quality of the Russian force. Um, but none of these things happens in a vacuum. Uh, the, the Ukrainians have been very effective at disrupting Russian rail lines um, for the, the whole region there. And, you know, I think that they will stay inside this bridgehead uh, for until they accomplish the purpose for which they created it to begin with. Ukraine has set its sights on something much larger, a long-term strategy to fundamentally shift the narrative of the war. This isn't just about halting Russia's momentum. It's about dismantling their command structure, forcing difficult decisions upon Russian leadership, and ultimately fracturing their grip on power. As Hodges elaborates, Ukraine's counteroffensive has ripple effects that extend far beyond the front lines. It's challenging the very core of Russia's military might and exposing vulnerabilities in their ability to respond cohesively. This is particularly evident in the disarray with which Russia is mobilizing troops, as Hodges points out in his latest interview, where he discusses how logistical failures and internal fractures in Russia's military hierarchy are complicating their efforts to resist Ukraine's advances. This is what the, the soldiers, their grandfathers would have done in the Second World War. Whenever uh, in the fighting on the Eastern Front, you had these huge offensives and counteroffensives, and there would be breakthroughs and units would be bypassed. And then they would counterattack. There's a lot of mobile warfare in this open areas. And so that what you just described sounds like the kind of thing that a well-trained, proper Russian general staff would be directing. I don't know that, that they've got the capability to do that. We'll find out soon enough. Um, but you have to go back to the original purpose for which Ukraine launched this counteroffensive in the course direction. It was to create a buffer. It was to change the narrative of the war to show that Russia, Russian victory was not inevitable. It was to draw off, hopefully, some of the Russian forces that were committed in the eastern part uh, of Ukraine in Donbass, in the Pokrovsk direction. Um, but it also, I believe, is intended to create a dilemma for the Kremlin. Uh, do they deal with this, or do they continue fighting in Pokrovsk, or do they have to what, what do they do about it? And uh, you can imagine that there's got to be some political pressure on Putin from the oligarchs there that are saying, what the hell is going on? How, they, how are you going to, you can't let the Ukrainians sit there occupying land that may could may be valuable later, by the way, during negotiations. So only, only the Ukrainians know how long that they intend to stay there. Nowhere is this more evident than in the bold new chapter of the war that began on August 6, 2024.
Ukraine's military, no longer content with holding its ground, launched a daring invasion directly into Russian territory, crossing the border into the Kursk region with around 300 troops. This operation wasn't just a military maneuver, it was a profound symbolic strike. For over two and a half years, Ukraine had been on the defensive, resisting Russian aggression with steely determination. But now, in a stunning reversal, Ukraine sent a clear message to Vladimir Putin. Russia's own soil is no longer untouchable. This incursion into Kursk wasn't an isolated event, nor was it merely about securing new territory. It marked a seismic shift in the dynamics of the war. Ukraine's soldiers didn't just breach Russian defenses. They held on to 500 square miles of Russian land. This invasion exposed the cracks in Putin's carefully crafted image as the aggressor. Suddenly, the man who had invested countless resources in invading Ukraine was faced with an invasion of his own homeland. Despite promises of a massive counterforce minus 30,000 troops, no less, Putin's military has yet to retake the territory seized by Ukraine. And Kursk was only the beginning. By the end of August, Ukraine had launched a second invasion, this time targeting the Russian region of Belgorod. On August 27th, reports confirmed that a Ukrainian strike force of around 500 troops, backed by armored vehicles, had crossed into Belgorod at multiple points. The tactics were strikingly similar to those used in Kursk, a nimble, highly coordinated force overwhelming Russian border defenses and paving the way for further incursions. Confusion reigned within Russian ranks as conflicting reports emerged, with some sources claiming 60 Ukrainian soldiers had breached the border, while others suggested as many as 200. But despite the fog of war, one thing was clear. Ukraine had breached Russian territory for a second time, and once again, Russia was caught off guard. This bold strategy is more than a mere escalation. As Ben Hodges noted in his earlier analyses, Ukraine is engaging in a high-stakes game that goes beyond battlefield victories. By invading Russian territory, Ukraine is forcing Putin into a corner, challenging his leadership and making it clear that the war is no longer confined to Ukrainian borders. The Belgorod invasion is particularly significant because of the region's strategic importance. Belgorod is home to vital industrial sites, including iron ore facilities crucial to Russia's military operations. By targeting Belgorod, Ukraine isn't just capturing land. It's striking at the heart of Russia's war-making capabilities, disrupting supply lines, and sowing chaos deep within Russian territory. But Ukraine's strategy goes even deeper. By pushing into Russian land, Ukraine is creating what could become a critical buffer zone. With each new piece of territory it holds, Ukraine gains leverage. Leverage that could be used in future negotiations with Russia. Imagine the scenario. Ukraine could offer to return captured Russian land in exchange for the withdrawal of Russian forces from Ukrainian soil. As of early September, Ukraine controls nearly 400 square miles in Belgorod, in addition to the 386 square miles held in Kursk. This growing buffer zone is more than just a tactical advantage. It's a bargaining chip that could shift the balance of power in the war. Putin's forces, already weakened by years of fighting, now face the unthinkable defending their own homeland from a relentless and determined Ukrainian military. The invasion of Russian soil has shattered the illusion that Russia is the only power capable of conducting cross-border operations. Ukraine has not only proven that it can defend itself, but also that it can take the fight directly to Russia, exposing deep vulnerabilities in Russia's ability to protect its own borders. This is more than a military maneuver. It's a bold statement of intent. Ukraine is no longer just defending itself from Russian aggression. It's reshaping the war, altering its very foundation. And as Ukraine continues to advance deeper into Russian territory, it's becoming increasingly clear that the dynamics of this conflict have irrevocably shifted. In his most recent commentary, Ben Hodges alluded to the fact that Ukraine's strategy is as much psychological as it is tactical. By taking the fight into Russian territory, Ukraine is undermining the morale of Russian forces and shaking the confidence of the Russian leadership. It's a powerful message. Russia is no longer invincible, and its borders are no longer impenetrable. The longer Ukraine holds onto Russian territory, the more pressure mounts on Putin to respond, and the more Russia's internal divisions are laid bare. So, 
As the dust settles and Ukraine's bold new strategy unfolds, one question looms large. How will Russia respond to this unexpected and unprecedented counteroffensive? Will Putin double down, or will this incursion force him to reconsider his long-term strategy? Whatever happens next, one thing is certain. Ukraine has changed the game, and the world is watching as this high-stakes drama continues to unfold.